Hey guys, uh, this video I'm going to be showing you my Exchange 2013 environment. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with Exchange. Exchange is a very powerful uh, mail server uh, created by Microsoft. And I actually have a deployed uh, server um, that I'm going to be showing you guys in my testing. Um, so let me log in to my server. So I've already installed my uh, Exchange server um, and it's up and running as you see. I'm actually connecting to it right now, uh, to the admin center. And, you know, the opposite, opposite, the difference between Exchange 2013 and Exchange 2010 is that the admin center is totally on the cloud over here in, uh, in, in Exchange 2013. And it's totally different. They give it a whole different uh, look. Um, you know, Microsoft really unified the way their cloud uh, interface works. So uh, it's it's really, really cool, actually, what they did. Um, as you see here, I created a, a nice and easy and simple Exchange server. Um, I installed the server onto a Server 2012 environment, uh, deployed it, and here it is, uh, the, the actual uh, ECP, the admin center. So the very first thing on here is the recipients, uh, and you see here, creating mailboxes now is extremely simple. You just click the little plus button, um, and you're able to make brand new user accounts. Um, so when you're in your... Uh, um, domain controller or well, not domain control but when you're in front of your machine and you're an active directory and you create a user you can easily add the, the existing user here or you could just create a brand new user so i can create as many mailboxes as i want um so they made the entire process uh, uh pretty much super duper easy um like stupid easy anyone could do it really um as far as adding boxes uh as far as doing groups is the same thing yeah, let me just Relog real quick. So adding groups is the same thing. Uh, resources, contacts have pre-built contact lists. But the one thing I really wanted to show you guys, the most important tab of them all, other than recipients, obviously, because that's where you create your mailboxes. It's actually Mailflow. Um, when you go to Mailflow, let's let's discuss connectors here because this is the most important thing. When you create a new Exchange deployment, the very most important thing you're going to want to do is create your first sent connector. Um, so you see here I already created one for SharePoint and I have here a send connector uh, for the universe. So this is a send all connector, meaning it's going to send anywhere. Let me double click on it um, and you'll see the settings here. So the, the delivery on this is basically, well, yeah, let me go back to general. And, uh, as far as delivery goes, it's made to send pretty much everywhere. You see the asterisk in domain. So without this connector, your Exchange server will not be able to send outbound mail anywhere. So it's very important that you set it up. And the way to do it is click on Mailflow, click on Send Connectors. And my security timeouts are driving me crazy. Oh. OK. So go back to Send Connectors, click the little plus icon. Um, and give your send connector a name. Now, another thing about this is that uh, you're going to want yours to be uh, internet connector, and I'm going to call this one sample. I'm going to click next. And very, very important is that when you create a connector, um, it has to be a forefront connector. I'll show you what I mean. So the MX record associated, uh, we're going to bypass this. We don't need this. This one, again, will be to send to all domains. Uh, FQDN, which means fully qualified domain name. You can specify specific domains to send to or all domains by putting in an asterisk. I'm going to put in an asterisk. Um, let me move further. Uh, server source is going to be my server, my Exchange server. I'm going to click OK. Uh, this is this is going to be the origin, which is this local server. I'm going to click on Finish. Um, and what it's doing now is it's it's creating my connector. And you see here, I just created a sample connector, doing the same exact thing that my um, my send all connector does. My session keeps expiring. It's very, very, very annoying. Um, okay, so this is my sample connector. It was very easy to create. I'm going to delete it now because I really don't need it. Uh, and let's go now to my receive connectors. So in order to receive, um, you should have uh, these default connectors already here, default uh, client. Um, so that, that stuff you shouldn't really touch because it's already set to receive no matter what. It's just sending that's really the issue and creating the connectors. Um, keep in mind that whenever you create a new connector or a new receive connector, you should use the front end transport uh, rather than the hub transport as an option. I'll show you right now what I mean when you click on the little plus to add it. Um, as far as role goes, go with front end. There is a bug in Exchange 2013 that the SMTP service dies after about 
I don't know, 20 minutes, and you have to restart the service every time if you create a brand new hub transport role. And I'm not sure why it's doing that, and they will release a patch to fix it. Uh, so that's the solution for that. So remember, select front end transport instead of hub transport if you are going to create any receive connectors. Uh, now, I've received a couple for my uh, fax software and for my SharePoint, obviously. And there we go, timing out again. <laughs> Very annoying. Uh, especially on this machine. So we, we do have here multiple things. We can have uh, uh, mobile devices, we can block mobile devices, we can give certain access rules to devices. Um, and you know of course uh, we have the server. So that that's really it. This is <laughs> a really quick video just to demonstrate to you with the ease of, of the uh, administration center. It's so easy to create a new mailbox now. You just create the little plus uh, icon. You can create a brand new mailbox or a linked mailbox. Uh, one person to have two emails um, that links together or just a specific mailbox. Uh, and always uh, you know organization is just the settings for your organization. I'm not going to enable the Federation Trust. I don't need it but um, I'm going to go back to Mailflow. Mailflow is the most important thing. Uh, Mailflow is going to show you right here the accepted domains. Right now I'm using my 800donatecars.com domain. Uh, we can put different email address policies. Everything you're used to in the 2010 version you have in the 2013. But just remember, receive connectors and send connectors, that's all in Mailflow. Uh, receive connectors, front end transport, remember that. You're going to thank me later because you'll wonder why your stuff is not working if you're trying to do it with hub transport. And as far as send connectors go, just remember when you deploy a brand new um, a brand new exchange uh, um, deployment, you'll want to create a send all um, send connector. Why? Because you might wonder why, hey, I can email from one at mydomain.com to two at mydomain.com, but I can't email from one at mydomain.com to one, two, three at hotmail.com. So remember, very important to have that connector in there. And as many as you want. Uh, you can create so many different connectors for different applications, uh, different apps uh, that you can use with this. So this is the enterprise version of uh, Exchange. Um, there is the standard version, professional version. Again, not much of a difference from what you're going to see here. Uh, logging in is very easy. It's always uh, going to be going to the URL. Uh, you have the Outlook Anywhere URL and you have the ECP URL, which is the um, Admin Center Exchange uh, control panel. Uh, and that's it. So that will conclude my video over here, just showing you real quick um, the very back end of Exchange 2013, uh, receive connectors, send connectors, um, and how easy it is. And it is indeed easy. Uh, so again, thank you for watching. Um, hope someone watching this, at, at least me, I wish I had someone who would have taught me uh, that my receive connector should be a front end transport because I dealt with a nightmare when building this thing because I kept having my service die out and I got a, a 4.2.1 uh, one error, a 421 um, service not responding error. You know, when you Google, if you go to Google and you type in exchange test, uh, there is a website here, exchangeconnectivity.com, which is a tester for Exchange to make sure things are working. And before I had put in uh, this transport, these particular rules, my test would always fail. Uh, my uh, inbound um, would always fail. Uh, and then you have your outbound test. So use this website to test your Exchange deployments. It was so easy to deploy this thing. I mean, it was a, a pop snap. You know, they made it like, a, you know, absolutely one, two, three, because it installs prerequisites for you on a fresh server. Everything you need, all you got to do is give it the proper domain, uh, and you get this screen, and you'll be creating your mail flow. So that's it. Um, in essence, this is really what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, you know, just the back end of it. Um, I'm still learning how to use it even better than what I already know. Keep in mind, um, this new version has a couple of, of tweaks to it, mainly the UI, just driving me crazy. But it's very, very cool. Um, and I hope this video may have helped somebody. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, this was um, a pleasure to make. See you guys next time.